Hi, and welcome to iVenetian Virtual Institute. What we're going to be looking at here are two pillars we're about to marble. We have sanded and smoothed those and sprayed a coat of high quality primer, and now we're about to begin the marbling process. I'll narrate to kind of tell you what we're doing here. What I've done is I've mixed up some uh, master's glaze, and I've added some um, burnt umber with some raw umber into it uh, to the saturated level of the darkest point in the pillar that I want. So in other words, you always mix your um, glaze to the darkest that you want and everything else from there works out lighter. Um, <clears throat> when I apply the glaze on these pillars, uh, I use a paper towel most of the time saturated uh, in the glaze mix and we try to apply the glaze with movement and very organically. I'm badgering at this point after placing some glaze in uh, some diagonal motion, making sure that I have covered uh, all the little lips and ridges. And what I'm doing is I'm badgering the, the heavy spots now to kind of keep it in place so it doesn't continue to drip down. That's my placement. That's where I want to try to suspend it. So we smear it with the badger ever so slightly. Now this clip here, I'm taking uh, some uh, a wet sponge and I'm, if you notice, rolling it, moving it, uh, pushing it, adjusting the pressure up and down, touching the edge of the glaze, busting through the glaze or, or, or cutting through the glaze, moving some of that glaze around. Uh, I'm instructing the cameraman to move around and uh, as you see now I'll take my leftover glaze and kind of move it out further onto the undone pillar. Um, so uh, now I'll take and badger that again because that was a wet sponge. That wet sponge um, helps to create all the millions of tones that you're going to see in the end result pillar here. And the badger, of course, is a softening tool. And I'm using very light pressure and just barely touching that material and keeping it in place by moving it back and forth uh, in its place. Uh, and uh, I tend to over badger. Some people do. Some people don't. Just That's a personal thing. Uh, now I've got the wet sponge again and if you'll notice I, I may run and ribbon through it to create diff dimensions and different um, shadings and appearances of different levels. Now I'm once again badger that out. That'll be the constant movement throughout this entire video uh, that is 21 minutes long. During that time you'll see me do most of this pillar, not all of it. Okay, so now I've taken a, uh, either a smaller sponge or a paper towel and I've dipped it in some black glaze. Looks like that one was a sponge. Sometimes I like to get my glaze saturated but get on the other side of the sponge with a little bit of water so I can get a mixture going. You, you don't want to do one solid thing. That's the, that's the thing you don't want to do is anything that looks solid. Now I've re-wet that sponge and now I'm coming through and I'm busting through some of the heavier places and uh, creating little faint ribbons of color as it washes out through the main color and now I'm badgering it in place again. And we may badger some of the darker into the brown area or the black into the brown area. There's four different colors being used there. Kind of a uh, amber orange, a brown, a black, and a white. Now that's my sponge with water and I'm pushing that line back I'm attempting to change the width of the line because if you notice that line looks uh, the same width from top to bottom, that's a no-no. Uh, I'll continue to work at it until I have completely changed it. And while I'm changing that, I might also, now I'm pushing it, uh, pushing the width out, uh, uh, pushing it in tighter there. You notice how the width has changed so it makes it more believable. Then I'll take some of that color in that sponge and I may drag it through the, uh, the other parts and uh, ribbon it in and out, uh, creating the illusion of uh, ribbons and waves. Now I'll push back on that black line again, and I may bring some of it back out to the white area. Constantly blending, uh, constantly cutting through, constantly changing the shapes until uh, the layering begins to form. Now I've continued with my brown here. I've got the uh, the paper towel. If you notice, it's kind of matted and ratty looking. Um, 
or crumpled and kind of torn because you know we use it a lot uh, and uh, I'm placing that brown next to that black trying not to touch the black maybe leaving a little white but yet running it through the other areas uh, keeping a very fluid motion uh, very organic twisting turning uh, leaving heavy spots, dark spots, working in a specific area, maybe blending it into another area, uh, always uh, in the same direction of the shift of the shift of the of the marble or the motion that you perceive the marble was formed. Um, that's what you're trying to imitate is a, is a, is a rock that was formed in the mountain. So now I'm coming back through with a water sponge, and um, and uh, you notice how it how I roll it back and forth and I don't create anything just in a straight line. I'm using the texture of the roller of the sponge as I roll it and twist it and bend it and uh, this way the look is always organic and we drag some of that material make sure we get in the crevices and now I go work the other area blending what I've picked up into that so there's always a blend of the two I've now I've cut through the brown line and I've drug it up around the other side and I continue to work the brown so I put all that brown in I took it all off uh, okay and now I'm moving on to another area of the pillar and notice how I skip and I move and I drag and I swirl and nothing that you can say oh look you know uh, that's uh, that's uh, like that I did there that's really not a good thing you know a swirl that's uh, a, a what would you call it a smear that one way down that's really not that good of a thing to do uh, it's gonna happen no matter how hard you try to be 100% organic you're not you're human but you have to constantly fight uh, so that um, you know this becomes a, um, uh, a a more natural looking effect we're adjusting now I'm telling the cameraman to go to the other side now I've taken some kind of a rusty color glaze uh, more reddish uh, this particular customer wanted to see a lot of red uh, in the pillar and uh, so uh, we made a kind of a, a rusty rusty red so that it wasn't such a bright bulletin red and uh, something that blended with the stone but was still red obviously as you can tell there and I have I've applied it on and now I run through with a wet sponge again and I pull some off notice how it leaves some saturated and the natural shape of the sponge leaves some little funny looking we call them uneven spots but they're called they're really organic looking spots because they're just placements that happen naturally and um, if you're good at it you won't mess up what the what the sponge did and if you're if you're like me you kind of go through it all and maybe you mess it up a little bit uh, and then you have to redo it again um, so uh, I'm just working the outer side now I'm going uh, I went in a little bit and then I went to the outside now I'm gonna badger again because notice those heavy spots I want to keep those in place so I just lightly touch them and move them around uh, kind of kind of move them side to side lightly just to keep them in place and at the same time it softens the look also you'll want to leave some soft and you'll want to leave some um, hard uh, you won't want to badger everything okay so now I've taken my brown again on uh, next to my red and we start back over again with a uh, another uh, another section of the brown swirling twirling uh, looping, pushing back and forth, uh, trying to create different levels of saturation, ribboning and swirls and movement, uh, even during the placement uh, of this uh, glaze. And now I'll badger that to keep that in place. Sometimes you'll badger, sometimes you'll come back with the sponge right away. It really depends on, on your artistic expression. Um, obviously if you badger it you have a better chance at coming back now and leaving some darker spots so maybe this area I wanted to see a little bit of darkness and maybe I've decided that I'll badger out uh, that bottom portion of the brown and leave just the heavy spots at the top you want different levels of saturation different placements and now you'll notice I'm going in really uh, straight intentional strokes you can push the glaze in a direction by doing that and that also leads to the illusion that 
um, there were more minerals pushed in that direction when this uh, marble was formed. Now I'm spritzing that with denatured alcohol. Since this is a uh, latex-based urethane glaze, when you spritz it with uh, denatured alcohol, the denatured alcohol rushes out the moisture and begins to set the material immediately. Now, it doesn't show right here now, but if we could you know, see this in HD up close, uh, there would be little ringlets forming in there and you'll notice them in a minute when I go back through with a wet sponge. Now I'm going to badger that to kind of keep it in place to create its effect and then I'll come with a wet sponge and you'll start seeing these speckles that appear out of nowhere. That's the ringlet that the denatured alcohol caused uh, when it touched the glaze, burnt through, hit the surface and caused it to dry and stain and now when I come back with the wet sponge it's going to remove the areas that didn't have it. Like right now, you'll start to see it. I'll start pulling some of this off. And all of a sudden, these speckles are going to appear underneath. There they are. See them right there above that uh, the lip? The speckles appear because that's where the denatured alcohol burnt in the glaze. And uh, so sometimes when you take off with the sponge, you'll want to leave hard ridges like that one white mark that's right behind my wrist there. And sometimes uh, you'll want to do soft blending, like what I'm doing now towards the edge. It's always a change and a constant difference. Uh, a, you're always doing something different. Now I'm kind of moving some of that glaze uh, here and there around to get some different tones and shadings and still maintaining a ribbon look as I go through. And then we'll continue with more placement of material. Before I do, I badger that area that I just worked a little bit. Uh, and see the speckles now that's from the denatured alcohol um, it gives a much more um, rock look a much more believable rock look with that uh, denatured alcohol I know this is a ton of information uh, but this is how it is this is a fast moving um, process for us this way we maintain movement and flow uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the glaze. Now I've taken a, uh, a new paper towel and I've grabbed some black, just straight black glaze. Uh, and uh, now we're going to create some heavy spots. Underneath it there, I've got lighter black going into it that we've already worked and left in place. Now I'm creating a wider, like if there was a wider vein. Now what I'll do now is I'll take some white glaze and I'll sandwich it in between the black and the red. And now I bust into the black a little and I smear the two and I pick up some black and I smear it into the white. So now I've got gray. So we basically got a ton of different colors going on there. And if you notice how they blend like as if this was wet minerals and the earth was forming and all of a sudden with a little bit of badgering, you have this beautiful marble looking vein that a few seconds ago was not there. The problem with that is now is that the top vein and the bottom vein in white are the same width. That's going to show as generally there's nothing two of the same that uh, identical that happens in a stone. So, um, so now I'll take and remember once again into different directions. I'll push the glaze from one place to another. And now I'll start working on top. I'll leave that in place, but we'll probably push into that white area. You'll see me what I call bust open the white area in with the brown to change that one, leaving the one at the bottom so that there's not two things the same. It's the human problem. We do something nice and then we start repeating it because we think we're good at it. You have to constantly fight that. So once again, I put some brownish red on, a combination of the, uh, the red and the brown, and uh, then I ran some white. And if you notice, I did it again. I did, there's one, two, three white ribbons right there. Um, so as much as I talk about changing all the time, even myself, I've, I have to fight this constantly. And you'll see me go through and change one of those two or three. Uh, I'll bury it, I'll cover it with something, I'll change the color or we'll, or we'll put some highlights on it. On this particular pillar or column, we did not add any um, brushed veins and move those brushed veins around with uh, the, uh, the eraser tool or the wipeout tool. Uh, we had done uh, several other pillars in the house 
and I wanted these two pillars at the library to be they're shorter and I wanted them to be uniquely different than the other ones so we did not put any cracks uh, we decided to use uh, ribbon veins uh, on this and so I'm just simply badgering what I've placed now kind of softening and blending um, and uh, of course the stuff that we did before is a little drier than the stuff at the top it takes a long time for this to dry now I'm cutting through all this I now so once again I'll take a wet sponge and I'll drag it twirling and twisting I'll drag I'll stop I'll rotate and we'll cut through it because because that's what happens when the minerals in the earth are forming uh, the molten minerals are moving around and getting squished and pushed and shifted and and uh, that's how uh, these uh, stones form and so um, you uh, uh, you now I'll take now there I'm taking a a wet sponge and I'm working around the perimeters of some of this and still creating motion while I'm taking off instead of putting on that way it picks up some and leaves some uh, and uh, I'm using a little jittery pouncing motion which I generally try not to do because that's another classic faux move another human look that I try to avoid alright so uh, now we're working our way around the pillar continuing the shape of the motion trying to be careful you don't, you don't, want, you don't want this to end up like a barber pole you see down towards the bottom uh, when the camera was down there the little speckles from the denatured the denatured alcohol I mean to say and uh, let's see here and the cameraman's trying to follow me around but he doesn't know where I'm going so it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult um, that's why we don't film a lot of these I literally had to take my assistant Ronnie and he had to grab the camera and film me uh, doing this bottom portion of this pillar to even give you this now we're starting at the top and we're maintaining the angle now you see I started past the corner not on the corner past it and you notice I'm putting a hundred percent coverage even in to the cracks and grooves see I went back there and I filled in that that lip uh, and now I squish and push all the way into the existent work with some lighter and some darker and then I drag it back through the existent work uh, in an attempt to uh, marry the two sections together as a continuation of what we were doing now I go back to that little bouncing movement and pushing and now the the uh, the lazy drag you know I, I probably should not have 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 uh, drug it like that in just a simple swirl but it's gonna happen you know you're not gonna you're not gonna be Picasso 100% uh, of the time on this that'll be fine you'll see that that pillar comes out gorgeous and after I get done with this pillar I go on a uh, uh, a trip to Las Vegas and I come back in a pretty good move and we thought this pillar looked very good and when I got back I did a better one because I it just uh, it's, it's, a, it's an expression of how you feel um, you know I had time to think about what I had done on this one uh, I now I needed to create one that matched it but at the same time constantly working towards a better finish all the time now as I'm badgering there um, I'll give you a few little things that we'll do when this is done um, when this is done and completed this step uh, we will uh, check it for completeness of course and then uh, we'll bag off and shoot a clear coat of um, shellac clear shellac uh, on the entire surface nice and even probably two coats and we reduce that shellac by 50 percent or one to one however you want to say that uh, for a, um, a cup of a quarter or a cup of uh, shellac clear shellac we add a cup or a quart of denatured alcohol to thin it uh, it's a very thin mixture and that's what you want is a thin glass coating on top of this you don't want a thick varnished coat on top of this and everything that we do is by spray if you notice uh, the only brush that is touching this is that badger brush and those uh, so that you know the hairs on that badger brush are the softness of a woman's makeup brush they're, they're very very fine uh, they do not scratch as you notice they're not scratching the surface 
um, and uh, even though they're wet with material they're that soft now we'll occasionally off camera we'll wash that uh, badger uh, and uh, spin it out and dry it out before we we have two or three of them and we're constantly changing those um, so uh, this is how uh, we do our uh, faux finish faux marble glaze uh, in Scottsdale Arizona that's what we're doing here um, and uh, we're about to do a house in Chandler Arizona or Gilbert Arizona do some faux finish and uh, some Venetian plaster at the Chandler Arizona house and um, you can always check out our portfolio on uh, www.ivenetian.com uh, and don't forget to visit, most importantly, fauxflix.net, F-A-U-X-F-L-I-X.net. And that's where you can buy the online uh, learning modules. Uh, hopefully you've bought this one and that's how you're seeing this one. And uh, you can always email me, Eli at ivanesian.com, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And uh, hopefully you have enjoyed uh, watching a live process of us doing a pillar now we're going to show you what that pillar ended up looking like in the end result and uh, thanks again for uh, joining along this is what the pillar looks like uh, we shot that with a 35 millimeter digital and uh, you I'm sure can recognize some of the things that I did to create those particular looks and uh, once again, we thank you for watching along and we thank you for your purchase, fauxflix.net.